Thank you, John and Helen. Why are we talking about mentorship and what is its relevance to today's coronavirus infested world? Because every living thing needs guidance, support, advice and counsel at various stages in their lives, irrespective of what is happening in the world or their circle of life. Anyone who has watched The Lion King remembers Simba's various relationships. The one he had with his father Mufasa, his girlfriend Nala, the parrot Zazu, the monkey Rafiki, and his friends Timon and Pumbaa. For those who have not watched it, when you do, study the relationships and the mentor-mentee relationships as they play out. Rolake Akikube Filani, Chief Commercial Officer at Mixta Africa, one of Africa's largest infrastructure developers. She is the reputable energy and infrastructure sector executive, has been a senior advisor to IFU, the Danish investment fund, has sat on the global advisory board of the Canadian private equity firm, Stone Chair Capital, and was head of the energy for FBN Capital and FBN Quest Merchant Bank. She is also a commentator on global economy, markets and business on platforms like BBC, CNBC and Arise News. Rola K is also an active pianist, mentor, public speaker and an executive coach. In 2020, she set up multiple streams of impact, a corporate mentoring platform for young career and inter entrepreneurial women, and also founded I Articulate, a public speaking coaching platform. Welcome, Rolake. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So today we're talking about mentorship. The two guests before us have already touched on different elements of mentorship. So I'm going to dive right in. And I'm going to start with a very obvious question. Mm. Does everyone need mentorship? Uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. I think everybody needs some form of guidance. Whether okay. they need a structured and formal mentoring program with a mentor uh, really just depends on where in their life they're at. Um, I, for instance, as a young graduate coming out of school, in the early 2000s. I never had a formal mentor, but I had people along the way that made a difference in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, but I became more intentional about it once I entered the corporate world. I then specifically started to seek out people that could help me along the way. Right, so intentionality. Yes, absolutely. And you know the funny thing, I'm going to keep going back to Simba <laughs> in The Lion King Yeah. because like you said, when you, when you were in school, you had informal mentorship. And then when you started your career, you became more intentional about it. Mm. If we study The Lion King, Simba was like that. Yeah. It was informal when he was younger. And then as he grew up, he became a bit more intentional about it. Mm. So it's, it's interesting that mentorship is something that happens in everybody's lives mm. and at different points. So this then takes me to my next question which is, are there different types of mentorship? You've already kind of touched on that when you've talked about informal and then you talked about being more intentional about mm. it. So are there different types of mentorship for different stages and areas in one's life? And yeah. what age do you think it's best to start having a mentor? Well, I think there's certainly different types of mentor mentorships. For instance, at this stage in my life, one of the things I'm really benefiting from is something I call peer mentorship, where... I don't necessarily have a mentor that is necessarily more experienced. There are people, I would say my contemporaries, people in my sister circle mm. who have specific gifts or talents or experiences that I'm leveraging on. And of course, repaying it back to them by also offering my own gifts and talents. And I think we often overlook that because there's this perception that mentorship is about this old wise sage with a long beard sitting exactly. somewhere in the corner and exactly. waiting for you to approach his or her throne. Yeah. And it doesn't always happen like that. And then another aspect of mentorship is reverse mentoring, where the mentor ends up being the one <laughs> learning from the mentee. And I have really great examples of that. So there are a lot of young women I've mentored over the last three or four years. Okay. And some of those same young women are now supporting me on my social media platforms because guess what? They, they're technologically savvy. Wow. They understand the ropes, young Gen Z and millennials who are future forward and are helping me understand how to keep up with the times and stay relevant. So in a sense, that, that also tends to happen. And then I think finally beyond that is the fact that the best types of mentees are those who look to give value. 
So as a mentor, there's so many other ways you can benefit from pouring into someone's life. Yes. Uh, that person may even be the one to open certain doors through their own specific network. So I think yes. we really need a, a mindset shift yes. in how we think about the mentor-mentee relationship. That, that's, that's really interesting because our earlier guest, Tejire, also talked about adding value. In you and I's catch up when we were discussing the topic, it was one of the things that that resonated in our conversation, where you kept talking about the mentee needs to be able to add value, you know? So it's, it's, it's really interesting you're saying that. And like you've said, there needs to be a mind shift because traditionally people look at mentoring as the person is older and then the person is younger. Mm. Whereas you've now talked about peer-to-peer -peer mentorship and reverse mentorship. Mm where you're getting something from the people that you have mentored in the past. Mm. And this, this, I believe, allows for, for us as human beings to understand that there's no hard and fast rule. Absolutely. You know, if you have mm. something to offer and if you can dedicate the time and you know you have the right temperament, then add value. Absolutely. You know, mentor mm. somebody, teach somebody something. So that makes it easier for us to do this thing where we're always talking about give one share one mm. you know everybody we all are part of yeah. this circle of life yeah but i have to say for you know you know how we all often say don't despise youth i think it's also important for our generation also not to despise old age yes i, I think there's a sense in which some parts of the younger generation feel like older people have nothing to offer because they don't understand the times. Very but true. actually, there's nothing like experience. Yes, and yes, it's yes. important for me to have much older, pe older women in my life yes. or older men, actually, who yes. can offer something. But I think to be a mentor, really, you have to have a level of selflessness. Um, that means that even if you don't get anything back in return, we can't go through life just living for ourselves. And you might find other rewards in it that are not immediately apparent. So at the same time, we, we need to have a bit of a balanced approach. You're not always seeking value from your mentee. Mm -hmm. You should be willingly to selflessly mentor just because, you know, it's the right thing to do or you've been called to mentor. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know what you've just said now, you've been called to mentor, which again goes back to purpose. Yeah. Which is something that we've talked about in previous episodes. Mm -hmm. And like you, I have a lot of older, older women who mentor me, older women and older men. And till date, I am constantly, you know, benefiting from the wise counsel of, of older people. So I, I, I fully agree with you on that. Um, so when deciding who you mentor, what do you take into consideration or is it the mentee that chooses you? <laughs> Very interesting. You know, in, throughout my career, I, on any given day, I'm sure today if I look in, into my LinkedIn DM, there'll be, oh, dear Mrs. Akinkwe Fulani, I really like what you do. Can you mentor me? Yeah. And sometimes I get the same messages that look the same way. For me as a mentor, one of the things I'm looking for is a self-starter. Now, I'm not expecting a mentee to be fully formed because after all, the reason they're come to, coming to me is that they want me to add value. But the best type of mentee is somebody who's actually started to do the thinking. They're not just expecting me to place the blueprint of their life on their lap. They actually have the ideas. They've done the hard work. And you have to realize as a mentee that me taking you on is like taking on a new project in my life. Yes. Right? And I'm not going to be the one chasing you to say, book this meeting, do that. You actually have to understand what it would take to make this work. And you only get as much as you give. So that, that's the, those are the types of mentees. And then there's something I call alignment. So where is this person going? Is it a career type of mentorship? If so, do I have the experience? And I have to be realistic. Do I have the time? And I'll talk a bit about why I set up the corporate mentoring platform. The other way around, if you're a mentee looking for a mentor, approach it differently. Don't just drop a message in an inbox. That person doesn't know you from Adam. Mm. You can speak to someone who knows them and, and say to them, you know what, I want Farrah to mentor me, but what is she like? You can send them an article. Oh, you know what, Mrs. Owotomo, I came across this article and I know you're in this field. I thought it would interest you. And you do that consistently over a period of time. By the time you get to the point of saying, can you mentor me? Guess what? Mrs. Owotomo actually knows you. She reckons with you. She sees that you're a self-starter and that you're really going to add value. And you're not going to be hard work for her in terms of that mentor-mentee relationship. I am excited. 
because I, I think I, what you've just said now, I really hope there are both young and older people listening right now because what you've just said now, it is so poignant. Mm. You know, it, it's the crux of it. And, and I, 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 really, I really hope that people, people understand what it takes to be a mentor and to be a mentee. Um, so now I want to talk about your corporate mentorship series. Mm. Streams of impact. Multiple streams. Multiple of streams of impact. <laughs> so it's a mouthful. You, I yes. Know. <laughs> and you started this in 2020. Yes. In the middle of the pandemic. Yes. That we're still experiencing. Yes. <laughs> you decided to start multiple streams of impact. Yeah. Please tell us a bit about so it. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit about how the name came about. So this is early 2020. Myself and my husband were sort of talking about our plans, you know, vision boarding and all those nice things we all love to do, New mm -hmm. Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him, you know what, Dak boy, this is how we're going to make money and do this and do that. And I was getting carried away. And he said to me, Rolake, and I was talking about multiple streams of income, which is yes. a lingo that you've heard. And he said, no, Rolake, impact first before income. The income will naturally follow. And then it was like a light bulb and aha moment. I was like, multiple streams of impact. And for me, I've always been someone who values deep connections. And I think one of the best things about mentoring is if you're able to build a deep relationship with people. But I then soon realized as a wife, a mother, a career woman, an entrepreneur, I can't dedicate my time one-on-one -on -one to every single young woman who says, can I be in your life? So multiple streams of impact was a way of making exponential impact without the burden of having one-on-one -on -one conversations all the time and ending up you know, burning myself out. Because I always say, if you can't show up for yourself, you can't show up for anyone. So I decided, you know what, all the ladies that have reached out to me in the previous three or four months, I'm gonna get all of them together, put them on a WhatsApp group, and start a series of quarterly webinars on topics that are relevant for them, and then occasionally support some of them one-on-one. -on -one. And that was how Multiple Streams of Impact was born. So we already had a cohort of last year, now we have a fresh group of 12 young ladies who are now part of that platform this year. Wow, that is awesome. And again, also goes back to what our last guest talked about, because mm. our last guest also talked about when you, when as a mentor, you decide to take on mentees, you need to be clear with yourself as to how many you can take on, mm. you know, so that you don't burn out. Indeed. So again, it's, it's interesting that you're saying this because these are, if somebody was to write a manual about how to mentor, these are some of the sage points Indeed. that would go into that type of, you know, that type of document to help other people who are trying to get into mentorship but need a bit of guidance as to how to do it without burning out. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, awesome. So... One of the questions that I always ask my guests is, I would like you to give me two most important things to consider when looking for one, a mentor, two, a mentee. So yeah. that's four things, two <laughs> things per sector or All per right. area. Okay, so as, let, me, let me start with when looking for a mentor as a mentee. Um, the first one I would say is alignment. Um, so you actually have to articulate your goals. Look at the mentor's profile, look at what they do. Is there some level of alignment, right? Um, I think that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is actually to understand that this is someone who has specific experiences and to look for ways to add value to them, right? Okay. It's counterintuitive, but I would rather somebody mentor me who I can add value to. From a mentor's perspective, it's really, I'm looking for a self-starter. I'm looking for someone who has done the work, and I'm looking for someone who there's a prospect of building a genuine connection with. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Rolake. Um, I know you have a very busy schedule today. Yeah. And I truly am honored that you could take the time out to come and talk with us this Th morning. Thank you so much for having me, Farah. Awesome. Really awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, on next with us is our fitness expert, Dolly Phillips. <laughs> 